I've been on a series about Paul. We're going to go to Paul chapter 3 today. Amen. So much that I've been teaching on this. And I just have a little bit more I want to share uh, about Paul here in the book of Philippians. And here in chapter 3, verse 7, 8, 9, and so on as we go forward this evening. I want to encourage some people. I want some people to know that everything that they're going through has purpose. Everything you're going through has a reason. You may not understand it. It seems like everything that comes against you is coming against you. But the Word of God makes it clear to us that in these last days, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Amen. Which means that we shouldn't be stalled. We shouldn't be surprised. We shouldn't be thinking like, oh my God, what is going on in my life today? What is going on in this world today? God clearly says that there will be a shaking taking place. And I understand that the Word of God said in this time of shaking. Amen. And, uh, Jesus said that, uh, the, tells Peter that you know, the, the, the enemy comes and, and desires to sift you, amen. So in the shaking, amen, in the same manner, God is trying to separate you from your old self into a new beginning. Hallelujah. Somebody say a new beginning. Mm -hmm. Because in our lives, in our lives today, because you're in church doesn't mean you have a new beginning. Because you say hallelujah doesn't mean that everything's good. Amen. Every one of us need to be wise. The Bible says he comes and he watches this white smoke. Which means that God is talking to the church. He's not talking to those that are unsaved. He's not talking for those over there. A matter of fact, if you really understand salvation, salvation to repentance of sin, and so you could be free. Oh, let me say that again. Salvation, the repentance of sin, isn't for you to be free from sin. The repentance of sin is so you can establish your relationship with Father. Oh, you're not hearing me. Amen. And so you could be allowed to go into a position where you have a relationship with God. Amen. Because if you're talking about sin and you're repenting from sin, after you repent from sin, God begins to talk to the church about repentance. Uh, what are you talking about, Pastor Reuben? And that ain't my message, but I'm going to throw it out there anyways. Amen. We repent from sin. Amen. He said, he that is free is free indeed. But while we're serving God, he begins to talk to us. He begins to talk to Pastor Reuben. He begins to talk to the leadership of the church. And he starts talking about repenting from dead works. Hallelujah. So there's many repentance that we got to go through in this journey to heaven. But that ain't my message today. I just thought I'd throw, up there, throw that out there. But in Philippians chapter 3, um, verse 7, Paul says this. Paul says, whatever... But whatever gain I had, I counted a loss for the sake of Christ. Paul said, for everything that became benefit for me, for everything that caused me to get a little closer, for everything that caused me to get a little bit of money, for everything that caused me to have a relationship with my wife, a relationship with my husband, he said, I count these things. And then all these things that he said, like gain in my life, all these things that he's talking about moving in this lifetime, amen, See, sometimes in our life, the very blessings of God hinder us from seeking God any further. Oh, you're not hearing me. Paul said, I counted a gain. For whatever I gain, I counted a loss. Amen. Paul was saying, I don't care how much I gain in this world, I'm not going to give up Jesus. Uh, no matter what I'm going through, I'm not going to give up Jesus. My heart is made up. My, my, my desires for Jesus is greater than anything I can have in this world. Oh, you're not hearing me tonight. But whatever I gain I had, I counted the loss for the sake of Christ. Paul was saying, that that I gave up. Hallelujah. The new car I gave up was for the sake of Christ. For the things that I benefit, I gave up for the sake of Christ. See, the Bible says, they said, what is it I must do to follow you? Jesus said, go home, pick up everything, leave everything behind, and follow me. Amen. See, we want God to bless us. We want to bring everything with us. Hallelujah. Which means that as you're going with the blessings of God and you're following God, some of the things that we gain become a hindrance. Oh, you're not hearing me tonight. And I'm not talking about not being blessed. That ain't what I'm saying. I'm talking to people who put their blessings in front of God. Amen. Those who get stuck, that, that they call the blessings of God and God has blessed me, amen. I, I got this brand new car, and I, I need this car blessed, amen. I, I need the church to pray for my new car, but the Bible said that the blessings of God come without sorrow. Oh, you're not hearing me. Hallelujah. So if God blessed me with a new car, why do I have a car payment? What God gives, he said, he that is free is free indeed, which means God don't bless me to be hindered. God don't bless me to be set back. Hallelujah. 
And Paul said, if I got these things, he said, all these things that I gained, I kind of lost. For what? He said, for Christ's sake. Amen. Which means there's some things in our life. There's some things in Pastor Ruben's life. No matter how important it is, how much I need it, how much I desire it, I got to be willing to let it go for the sake of who? For the sake of Christ. Which means that there's going to be things in my way. Hallelujah. That want to hinder me from following God with my whole heart. Oh, you're not hearing me tonight. In verse 8, Paul continues. He says, indeed, I count everything as a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. Paul says, indeed, I count everything. Paul is now sitting back. Paul was talking about his blessings. Paul was talking about everything that he gained. Paul was talking about on this journey to heaven, on this ministry where he wrote all his books, on his journey to the prison, on his journey writing letters, as he talked to Timothy, and we talk on and on and on and on. Paul said, for these things, indeed, I count a loss. And everything I lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ. Paul was saying, I'm willing to give up things so I can know Christ a little better. Oh, you're not hearing me. Which means that some of us have to be willing to give up some of our personal time so we can get a little closer to God. Oh, you're not hearing me. Paul said, I know, indeed. Which means he said, I know without a fact. I count everything a loss. Because it's surpassing worth knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. How many of us tonight are willing to give up some stuff to get a little closer to God? How many of us tonight are willing to get a little closer to God and be willing to give some stuff up and count some things a loss? Amen? Paul said these things that I gained, which means Paul said these things that I gained, it means that these things that he lost were benefit to him. Oh, you're not hearing me. If, if they weren't, Paul would have said these things I didn't need, I tossed to aside. But he said these things that I gained. Hallelujah. Which means that we got to be cautious, I got to be careful, that I'm not being blessed by God and allowing the blessings to interfere with what God is doing in my life. Paul said, I'm coming kind of lost knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Which means that everything that he's doing, he's getting greater knowledge. We learned in chapter 2, he said, I pray that you would know him more and more in the love, he said, in the knowledge, and much more in this place called discernment. So Paul is always talking about Gaining the benefit of having a relationship with Jesus Christ. In the same scripture, he says, For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them around it. He said, For the sake of Jesus, I count these things a loss. And he said, I count them as rubbish. That's here in the New International Bible. But if you go to the King James, he said, I count it as dung. What is dung? Dung is poop. It, it's a fertilizer that animals release on the ground so it can regenerate the ground. So Paul was saying, these things that I've lost. Oh, listen to what I have to say. He said, for his sake I have suffered the loss of all things. He said, for Jesus' sake. Not for his sake. Not for his benefit. You know, like some of us, many of us. I'll go to church, but it has to benefit me. I'll do this, but i got to get something out of it. I, I, I'll help the church, but i got to get this in return. I, I want to serve Jesus, but Jesus got to do this first for me. Paul said, for the sake of his suffering, I count these things a loss. And he said, in all things, I count them as rubbish. That word rubbish means dumb. It means poop, which means that he said, I count them as rubbish. It means that I count them as dumb, which means that everything I lost, I count it as fertilizer for my future gain. Oh, you're not hearing me. He said, I count it as fertilizer, which means everything I lost. Hallelujah. Just like a farmer has to regenerate the ground, Paul said, I count it as dung. I count it as rubbish. It's a fertilizer to where God is taking me. It's a fertilizer for the knowledge of the word of God I'm going to get. It's a fertilizer for me to have a relationship with God. I hope you understand me tonight. But Paul said, I count it as rubbish. And then you have me and call it rubbish in the King James to call it dung, which means it's poop. Which means that it's using the things that he has lost for the gain of Christ as fertilizer. The Bible said all things work together for good for all those who love Christ. 
Which means Paul is saying that everything I count as rubbish has purpose. Everything has reason. Everything has a, a, a mindset for him to gain what God has for him. Hallelujah. See, when you're all, oh my God, I lost my job. Paul said, I lost him again. Oh, you're not hearing me. Oh, my, my relationship is shaken. You know, so many of us have our relationships shaken. And because your relationship is shaken, now your relationship with Christ is shaken. Which means that you never had a relationship with Christ. If the things around you, Paul said, you can count as a loss, as dumb, which means that everything that's taken place, everything that affected you from your family to your job to your personal life and everything that's gone on and everything that's happened to you, you know how we do, we play the little fiddle, oh, it's all oh, poor little me. Paul didn't play that game. Paul said, anything that occurred to me, I counted it as a game, that I would know the love of Jesus Christ. That I would experience the suffering of what he did it for. Hallelujah. He said, in, in order that I may gain, he said, I count these things as, as fertilizer that I may gain. I release it that I would receive more. Hallelujah. I'm willing to let this go. Hallelujah. Because God has much more over you. See, you're going to settle for the 2015, five years ago, your brand new car. You know how you're excited. I got a car right out the line. And you're going to hold on to that car for the rest of your life when God had a 2021 ready for you. Hallelujah. But I'm going to hold on to that because God gave that to me. The Bible makes it clear that the blessings of God for me are an abundance. He told Abraham to go up the hill and as far as he could look, he said that was his, would belong to you. As, high, as the stars are in the sky, as the sand is in the ground, he said that's your abundance. That's your blessing. Hallelujah. See, we as a people of God, sometimes we settle for a little blessing. Hallelujah. And one thing I'm learning is that the, the, the blessing of God comes without sorrow, which means there's no attachments. Hallelujah. That means that I mean, I'm not stuck in that place. That means I got blessed, but am I willing to let it go that I could gain more? Some of us are not willing to let go of the place we're in. We're saying, God, I need more, but you won't let go. Hallelujah. God, I need this. I, I need my relationship. I need my marriage to be fixed. <laughs> but you're not willing to let go of your personal issues that created the problem in your marriage. See, it's easy for us to blame one another. Oh, you're not hearing me today. Hallelujah. And point finger. That after you're done pointing finger and you didn't come to a, an agreement and see the blessings of God in it, now it's God's fault. Why is God doing this to me? No, Paul said all things that happen have gain. Everything that's going on in my life. It's for the sake of Christ. Amen. It's that I would grow. It's that I would mature. Hallelujah. It's that uh, Paul talks about spiritual maturity in his writings. And some of us today, including Pastor Reuben, there's a time in our life that suddenly you thought you were growing up. But now here comes a little issue and suddenly you're immature again. It's like this. We're asking God to heal us from a sickness. But Jesus said, I gave you that power to do it yourself. If you would understand the, the, the empowerment that we have, that God has released unto us, Jesus said, all power and authority has been given to me. He said, now that I'm getting ready to depart, I release it to you. Hallelujah. What was Jesus saying to us? That many of us today are in situations that we're more than overcomers, he said. Hallelujah. But we can't overcome because we don't understand the perspective that we operate from. We don't understand the ingredients that have been poured into us by way of Jesus Christ's death. He said all power and authority has been given to us. Hallelujah. We're asking people to pray for us, uh, do this for us, and do that for us, and it's okay. But I'm understanding as I get closer to God that the things that I ask God to do, he's given us to do. Hallelujah. He said, lay hands on yourself. He said, bring them to the elders of the church. He said, if any sick among you, he said, bring them to the, to the ministry of the church and let them lay hands. Hallelujah. You guys are not hearing me tonight. That means that the empowerment of who God is, the things that we're to gain, are what? They're the very thing that God wants us to operate from. Hallelujah. You imagine, just think about this. 
Just get this food for thought. We've been in church a whole <laughs> long time. Serving God for 15 years. Serving God for 20 years. Serving God for 5 years. And the scripture says, they will know you by the signs and wonders and the miracles that follow you. Think about that for a moment. They said they will know you by the signs and wonders and miracles. What signs and wonders? The very thing that Jesus released unto us. We're up there preaching the word of God. And Pastor Rubens, I, I, I'm the preacher of God. I'm, I'm the man of God. And, and, and God has empowered me. And, and God has given me knowledge. And the words I preach bring conviction. But it can't bring a miracle. Oh, you're not hearing me. But Paul says, these things that were where I was in the ministry and where I'm going, I got to let go of that part of the ministry Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5 or 6, Paul says, leaving those elementary things of Jesus Christ behind, such as of laying hands. He said, those days are over, Pastor Reuben. The gain in Christ means we're at a new place in Christ, maturing in the greater things of God, bringing signs and wonders to the church, that where Jesus went, people walked for miles. Just to come and see the miracle that Jesus Perform. In the book of Matthew, the Pharisees and the Sadducees come up to Jesus. Hallelujah, you got to read the story. And they tell Jesus, if you're the Messiah, let us see a miracle. Give us a sign. And Jesus said, this sign that you're looking for happened in the prophet Jonah way back when he was in the belly of the fish. Oh, you're not hearing me today. See, we're asking Jesus to show us, and he's already done it. Oh, you're not hearing me. We're asking God to give us a sign, and the signs are all around us. Hallelujah. We're asking God to do this in my life, and it's already been given to us. Hallelujah. The issue is called maturity. The issue is called growing up. The issue is letting go of the old, that you would lose something, so you could gain the benefits of who Jesus is. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying to break away from your marriage. I'm asking you to take what God has given you and part it into the things that are wrong in your life so you can see the change and the power of who Jesus is. See, we spend more time talking about one another, degrading one another Come on. as husbands and wives. We Come gossip on. all over the church about everybody. Uh, Hallelujah. We do that well, good, good. but we can't perform the power of Jesus in the ministry. Mm. Hallelujah. We have a dying world. We're in a COVID. We're in a thing called COVID-19, the, the coronavirus. Scientists, doctors, professionals, politicians, everywhere you turn, they're looking for the answer. And the answer is in the church. The answer is in the people of God. Hallelujah. The answer is in what? What people of God? Those that are willing to release the very empowerment and the ingredients of the Holy Ghost have, that have been released unto you by who? By way of the Son of the Father. Hallelujah. What are you talking about, Pastor Ruben? Jesus said, I must go, let there be another one that comes after me. Hallelujah. See, Jesus didn't say, say depart, this or depart. He moved to a side so the Trinity could take its full course. That we would be able to operate from this place called the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He said that there will be one called the Comforter. He knew that you would be broken. He knew that the things in your life were going to come against you. He knew the immaturity of who we are was going to take place. Hallelujah. See, there's a whole lot of us talking Jesus, 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 and no power. Oh, you're not hearing me. There's a whole lot of us talking about uh, uh, being blessed. Uh, uh, that, that God has delivered me. You know how our testimonies are. I was once lost. I was once blind. Now I'm found. Now I see. We call ourselves treasures out of darkness, if I can say that. Hallelujah. That's just the beginning of your relationship with Jesus. See, salvation came that we would have a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Uh, salvation came that I may know God. 
And then we jump over here to, to the, the writings of Paul, and Paul starts challenging us, hallelujah, on the benefits of what God has put into us. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Pastor Ruben. Paul didn't write no letters to stroke my back. Paul didn't write no letters to say, I feel sorry for you, Reuben. Paul began to write his letters that he would be a prime example of what Christ could do in his life and what he could do in your life. See, that's our issue today. We have no Pauls in the church. Hallelujah. We don't, we, 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 we have people who have been shipwrecked, you know, we know we say, I've been shipwrecked like Paul, but the difference between Paul's shipwreck and, and my shipwreck is I sunk to the bottom. Paul said, I'll grab anything, he tells the people, and float on it until we get to land. Hallelujah. See, sometimes in our life, you're looking for a great big thing to come and save you. But Paul said when he was shipwrecked and people were jumping off the boat, he said, grab what you can float on, grab what you can hold on to, and just hold your course. Oh, you're not hearing me tonight. Hallelujah. Paul goes on to say in verse 9, and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law. Paul, I look Paul here in verse 9, amen, he said, and be found in who? In Jesus, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law. What was Paul saying? I, I'm not, I, I want to be found in Christ, and let me read that so you understand it, and be found. Somebody say, I'll be found. I'll be found. Where? In Christ. Not having righteousness of who? Of my own that comes from what? The law. Paul was saying that when you find me, I'm not going to be following the ways of the church. I'm not going to be following the laws of the land. I'll be operating from a righteousness of Jesus Christ, which was willing to give up things so he could gain. Oh, you're not hearing me. See, we are not willing to lose things yet. Hallelujah. A little shaking going on and we trip up. But Paul said, it's not my, my own righteousness that comes from the law, but which comes through what? Faith in Christ. Paul was saying, it's not about me. Paul was a great man of God. Paul was shipwrecked. I mean, we could go on and on about what Paul been through. But Paul said, it ain't about me. It's about me having faith in Christ. Hallelujah. How many of us tonight have great faith in Christ? It's not about your righteousness. It's not about the name of your church. It's not about Riverside Peacemakers. It's not about that church. It's not about the card that you put your picture on and call yourself a doctor. You call yourself a pastor. You call yourself an apostle. You call yourself a teacher. You call yourself a prophet. He said, it's not by the righteousness of law. Oh, you're not hearing me. I know that's going to rub some feathers on the wrong way. But Paul says it here. Is that the righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but which comes through what? The faith in Christ. The righteousness from God that depends on faith. See, the, the righteousness of God, hallelujah, I want to live righteously. I want the righteousness of Christ in my life. Hallelujah. Paul said it comes by what? By faith. Amen. Which means that every morning, I can't get up talking about the fight that I'm in. We have too many people of God today talking about keeping this great battle, fighting this fight to overcome the devil. What are you doing fighting the devil when the Bible said the battle is not yours, but it's a God? Yeah. Hallelujah. See, some of us are taking on fights and they're none of your business. See, when I got saved, I didn't need a men's home. When I got saved, I didn't need to go to a super living home. When I got saved, I didn't need some drugs to help me grow up, grow up, grow up function. My pastor said, he that is free is free indeed. Which means that the power of God, the day I got saved, I changed. The Bible said everything that was old became new. Oh, you're not hearing me. Hallelujah. It's not a fight. A fight to become sober is means it's a man that's still immature. Oh, you're not hearing me. A, a, a fight for a marriage to, to make it right means we got two people not willing to submit to the Word of God according to what the Word of God said. See, everything that you need is in the Word of God. And if you can't operate from the Word of God, 
you got nothing to benefit from. Amen. There's nothing you can benefit from. You can go see counselor after counselor. You can go from home to home. That ain't going to fix anything. What's going to fix you is the faith in righteousness. Believing that God is working in your life, standing on the word of God, and there's no weapon formed against you that should prosper. Hallelujah. I love it. I've been in church for about over 30 years. And I love hearing the people of God. I love hearing them. It doesn't matter what city you're in. You hear it all the time. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Two weeks later, you run into them, and they're in a good fight, they say. I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm at the bottom. I can't find Jesus. I can't get a hold of What do you mean you can't get a hold of Jesus? Hallelujah. I don't understand that. You are of Christ. You have been empowered, Jesus said. Hallelujah. He said, I've given you all power and authority. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Which means the enemy cannot hit me like he used to hit me, if I can say it that way. Hallelujah. You're not listening to me tonight. See, we got to be willing and obedient. John said what Jesus was saying, John, my beloved. He said, those that believe in me shall do greater things. See, we say greater works what we do. No, you're not going to do greater works. He said, those of you that believe. Well, how do you believe? By experiencing the things of God. How do you experience the things of God? By maturing and growing in the church. Which means you're going to stumble. You're going to fall. But the victory is yours already. Hallelujah. My pastor used to make me crack up. He said, certain, certain, so and so and so have been fasting for five days and still don't got the victory. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the word of God is yea and amen. All we got to do is apply the word of God. Hallelujah. God is just so good to his church. I hope I'm not rubbing anybody wrong, but I'm trying to get us past up to this place of, of maturity, this place of uh, being established, of this place that we have this strong foundation. Verse 10 says that I may know him in the power of the resurrection and may share his suffering. Man, that's a deep statement to make of the man of God. He said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. Paul was saying, whatever took place in your life when you were caught up, he said, I want to know you right there. I want to experience you right there. Hallelujah. I want to experience you right there. I have, I have a drug habit. No, I want to experience you in the power of your resurrection. I'm having marriage issues. I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. I have personal issues. I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. Paul was saying, I don't want to know you under the power of the church. I don't want to know you under the power of that man. I don't want to know you under the power of that lady. I want to know you, he said, in the power of your resurrection. Whatever rose you up from the dead, the day that Mary and Martha went out and you went there, whatever rose you up, I want to know you right there. Mm -hmm. I want to have that personal experience. Mm -hmm. I want to know people that I'm just not blowing hot air. I'm not just talking about Jesus Christ, but I want to talk to people by personal experience of great victories. Amen. Personal victories of signs and wonders. Hallelujah. We already have enough churches. Uh, right where we're at, there's like seven churches in one line. We're all neighbors, one to another. One on Kansas. One on Ottawa. One on 14th Street. One on Pennsylvania, two on Pennsylvania. Hallelujah. Whole lot of people talking about Jesus. But Paul said, I don't want to talk about Jesus. I want to know you, Jesus. I want to have you. I want to know everything about you. And the very thing that you experience in the power of your resurrection, can I be a partaker of that? Oh, you're not hearing me tonight. He said, I may know you in the power of your resurrection. And may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. What? That I may share in what? <clears throat> Paul said, I want to share in his sufferings. Paul was saying, the journey to Calvary, the day he fell with his cross, he goes, I want to share in that suffering. When they were beating him, 
He goes, I want to share in that suffering. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. See, there's a cost to pay to serve Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's a price that you're going to have to pay. There's some places you're going to have to go that you're going to have to be willing to experience the suffering. That's why Jesus said, if you want to follow me, he said, pick up your own cross and follow me. I was like, Jesus, my God, why would you tell me to pick up my cross? I want to pick up your cross. He said, you couldn't pick up my cross. Hallelujah. You couldn't pick up the cross that I bear for you. But he said, pick up your cross. I said, why would you want me to pick up my own cross? Do you want me to experience your suffering by picking up the cross? The Holy Ghost said no. See, when Jesus went to the cross, oh, you're not hearing me. Hallelujah. He went as the son of man. Oh, you're not hearing me. So when Jesus was nailed to the cross, they didn't nail the spirit of God to the cross. They nailed his flesh to the cross. Oh, you're not hearing me. So when Jesus said for me to pick up my cross, he said, Reuben, are you willing to put your flesh on the cross? Are you willing to give up yourself and allow yourself to go to the cross? Are you willing to die to your little habits? Are you willing to die to your little spiritual behaviors that you have? Hallelujah. The way you've been trained in thought. No, 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 no. Let's come out of tradition. Let's come out of religious ways. Let's come out of serving God robotically. Allow ourselves to be moved by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The Bible said in the last day, Paul writes it himself. He said people are going to begin to prophesy the Word of God. Churches today, we're in the last days. You're preaching the last days, but you refuse to believe in the prophetic. You cannot contradict the Word of God and expect the Spirit of God to rest in your church. It's time for the prophets of God to rise up in the house of God. Both that are hearing God, open your mouth and speak. Come on. We need to hear you. God, we need to hear you. Some of you are waiting to hear from God, and God has put a prophet in your life, and you don't allow them to speak because you don't believe. Yeah. Hallelujah. Paul said, I want to know you in the suffering. I want to experience that house. I was like, man, Paul's a tough guy. And Paul suffered. Hallelujah. But in verse 11, chapter 3, he says, That by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Paul, by any chance, Paul said, by any chance, can I experience the resurrection from the dead? Oh, you're not hearing me. Think about what Paul is saying. Hallelujah. See, we need... The rising up of Christ, that Jesus was the only one to do it. We have power to raise up the dead. Paul said, by any chance, by any way, may I attain? Let me make sure you guys understand, because I'm reading it. I don't want to say, I, I'm out of the word of God. He said, by any means, by any chance possible, is there any way I may attain the resurrection from the dead? Hallelujah. What was Paul saying? By any chance, now that Christ has died, do I have the ability to attain that resurrection power? Oh, you're not hearing me today. God is talking to us, church. It's time for us to come up a notch. Our children are suffering. Our families are suffering. Our city is suffering. Our county is suffering. Our state is suffering. Our nation is suffering. Hallelujah. While we sit back and play church. As we sit back and, and share with one another. Who can be a better preacher? Who can write more books? It's time to bring the power of the resurrection back to the church. It's time to bring the power of the resurrection back to the people of God where it belongs. Amen. That we're able to share it with others. Amen. Hallelujah. See, it's not that people don't want to get saved. The people that are unsaved don't have no reason to get saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
you know, we tell them, uh, uh, and I'm not taking away because we're guilty of that. You know, we get excited. Uh, so in, in the parking lot service a couple weeks, some people got saved. Uh, I got excited. I go, man, the purpose we're out here happened. Mm -hmm. But what do we do with them after they got saved? Hallelujah. We didn't want to lead them to salvation, but we can't make disciples of them. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. God is saying now, and he made it clear to the word of God. If you do not have a disciple, you're not a disciple of his. What was the word of God saying? If you're not teaching the word of God and making a difference, having an impact in somebody's life, you're not of him. Which means everything about us, because of who we are and the position that we're in and what was given to us by Jesus, we're everything that the world needs. And I'm not taking away from Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus said, greater works would you do? Which means Jesus said, I'm getting ready to depart. I said, why are we going to do greater works than you? You were the greatest. He said, my ministry was three years. And some of yours is 20 and 30, and you haven't did a miracle yet. He said, by way, by any chance, can I gain that resurrection by way of the death? Hallelujah. In verse 12, verse in chapter 3, Paul says, Not have I already obtained this, or am I already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus had made me his own. Paul said, Not as I already obtained it, obtained this, or am I already perfected. Think about that. Paul was writing a letter. He's talking to the Philippian church. And he tells it, it's not as I've already obtained it. And neither am I perfect. Hallelujah. Which means that Paul was saying, I still have some shortcomings. I still have some rough edges. I, I, I still have issues in my personal life. Just like many of us today. But Paul didn't allow those issues in his personal life to keep him for, to strive to the mark of the Most High. How do I know that? Because it says it here. Not as I've already obtained this, or am I already perfect, but I press. Somebody say press. Uh, to make my own. To make it my own because Christ Jesus made me his own. Paul said, I press on to make this very word of God my own. That I am the light of the world. I'm personally taking the word of God and making it who I am. He said, I'm not doing it because of my own, but I did it because Christ did it for me. Oh, I love it. Paul was willing to share the experience of God with other people. Hallelujah. We're afraid to share because why? Because many of us are leaders and if we're honest with people, People will think that we're not in the proper position because there's areas in our life that we areas in our life that we lack. Our edges are still rough. But Paul says, I'm not already perfect, and neither have I attained it. See, I always say this: if men of God were more honest with the people, more people would get saved. We gotta be honest with the people. We gotta let them know that we're not perfect, but we strive. Why do we strive, Paul said? It's not because I'm making it on my own. I'm doing it because Jesus did it for me. Jesus pressed. The Bible said when he was in the Gethsemane, he was pressing. He was being pressed, pressed, pressed. He went out. He looked for his disciples. And he said, can't you even spend an hour with me? You think Jesus went out there to, 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 to tell them because you lacked your prayer life that now I'm going to suffer? No, it had nothing to do with that because it had purpose already. The prophetic word was taking place. Jesus was going to go to the cross, but what he was saying is, what I'm getting ready to do for you, can you make it your own also? Can you be a partaker of it? Can you be a participator in it? Can you experience what I experienced so others would find me? And that's what Paul was saying here. Hallelujah. Paul is saying that here. He says, not about me. It's about what Jesus has done for me. What has Jesus done for you lately? Hallelujah. Are we still stuck on 1920s testimony? Are we still getting in front of the church and testifying that we were once a drug addict? 
Is that our testimony? Is that all that God can do for you? No. God has done great things in my life. What I was before has nothing to do where I'm going now. God has greater things for you. My purpose is larger. Why? Because I made what Jesus Christ did on the cross my personal being. Because if he done it for me, I want to do that for him. Hallelujah. And that has already attained it. Hallelujah. Paul says in verse 14, I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said, I press. He wouldn't use the word press if it wasn't a struggle. If it wasn't a struggle, he would have, I walk. I hop, skip, and a jump. But he said, I press. Which means that he was against obstacles. Which means that he had things going on in his life like many of us. Marriage problem, problem I press toward that goal. Children problem, I press toward the goal. Health issues, I press toward the goal. Hallelujah. Paul had issues, he made it clear. But he said, in all these things I press toward the mark. What mark? The mark of who? Christ Jesus. Paul said, I have a destination. I have an attended in. I have a vision I wrote down. There's a place I gotta get to. There's the things that he experienced with me, that I experienced with him, that no one else can say that I personally didn't experience Christ. Oh, you're not hearing me. Paul had personal experiences with the power of who Christ was. Hallelujah. How many of us today can literally say that we had a visitation from God? How many of us can really say that when I went into prayer, amen, when I was at my lowest ends, amen, when people left me to die, when everybody was giving up on me, and my husband was quitting on me, and my wife had turned her back on me, and my children became drug addicts. Paul said, when I was at that place that it seemed that they left me to die, is when God took me up to the heavens. Hallelujah. Sometimes in our life, a bad situation becomes a good situation. A bad situation becomes a visitation from God. Hallelujah. If what? If you can press. Press toward what? To the mark. What mark? The mark, the mark of the most high. Christ Jesus. That means you got to get through. The lady with the issue of blood said, if I could just touch his garment. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. Tried everything. And the scripture said that she got down on her knees and, and she began to crawl. Amen. And you got to understand that there was many men around there. There was probably spit on the ground. There was probably poop on the ground. There was probably don donkey dung on the ground. And she's crawling. And she said, if I could just press through this crowd and if I could just touch the hem of his garment. I know I would be made whole. Hallelujah. Sometimes in our life, church, we got to press. Even if it seems like you got to crawl. Get to your attendant in. Get to the mark of the most high. Let people see what you've been, get, that you've been through so they can find Christ. Paul already said tonight, all that I gained, I counted a loss. I'm willing to let it go. Hallelujah. I'm willing to sacrifice some things so I can know who he is. Paul didn't want to just a, a personal re, a visitation from God. He, he just didn't want God to, you know how we do, I'm going to go into prayer so you hear what God is saying. Paul didn't want to just hear what God was saying. Paul just didn't want a personal experience where he can come out of prayer and say, God touched me. Paul said, the experience that I want, I want to know him in the power. When I come back to you, I want to talk to you about the power of his resurrection. What a testimony would that be? What kind of testimony would that be in today's church? That we can come back and tell the people of God that I experienced the power of his resurrection and, and I taste a little bit of the suffering of the cross. God is good to us, church. And I'm getting ready to close out and give you two more scriptures. Paul says in chapter 3, verse 15, he said, let those of us who are mature, 
Let me say it again. Paul's talking to saints that are what? Mature. He said, let those of us who are mature think this way. And if anything you think overwise, God will reveal that also to you. Paul was saying when he told the Corinthian church, let this mind be in you that was in Jesus. Paul was saying, can you think like Christ? Can you talk like Christ? Can you walk like Christ? And anything that you do for Christ, he said, the Father himself will reveal unto you. Oh, you're not hearing me. Hallelujah. There's some things that God wants to reveal to us, but we got to be in a mature state of mind. We cannot still be milk drinkers. Hallelujah. We can't be there just like choking on milk, like drowning ourselves on milk. Sooner or later, Paul is saying, when are you people of God are going to become eat meat meat eaters? Hallelujah. He said, the thing that the Father will reveal unto you. He said, let those of you that are mature think this way. Paul was saying, everything I just talked about, everything I talked about, he said, those of you who are mature, I would love for you to think that way. Hallelujah. Let this mind that is in you be in Christ. The Christ, the mind of Christ be in you. Hallelujah. You know, so many of us have spent so much money on WWJD, I guess that's how you say it. And we say it all the time. What would Jesus do? Paul was saying, I can only give it to those that are mature. And the Father will reveal to you. There are some things that are unheard that God wants to deliver to us by the Spirit of God. But it can't be delivered to us because we're not ready. We're not mature. We're still trying to get our marriage right. We're still trying to get rid of the drug habit. We're still trying to get rid of the alcoholism. We're trying to get rid of all these things that ain't a Christ in our life. And every day we want to call that a fight with the enemy. It ain't a fight with the enemy. These are decisions that you get up every day. If you want to be a rich man, you better get your mind thinking like a rich man. Hallelujah. Can't be telling people that God's going to bless me and I'm going to be rich and you and me want to get a job. <laughs> Let this mind that was in Jesus be in you. Hallelujah. God is blessing people. God is using people. And God wants to use you tonight. God wants you to be the mature one that he can put on a pedestal so others can see the power of his resurrection and the suffering of what he went through. Hallelujah. That they will become overcomers. Hallelujah. See, Jesus gave it to us so we can give it to others. But we go from church to straight home. We go to Bible study and straight home. Hallelujah. We want to go preach to the lost, but we can't preach to our loved ones. Hallelujah. He said, to those of you that are mature, he said, God wants to reveal some things to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then close out with this scripture. Verse 17. I'm closing out. He said, brothers, join in imitating me. Paul says, come on, guys. Come on, peacemaker church. Come on, body of Christ. Come on, people of God. Imitate who I am. He ain't taken away from Jesus, but he knows God and put him in a place to minister to you. And Paul is saying, look at who I am. Look at what I've been through. Look at my sufferings. Look at my chains. Look at my bondage. Look at my shipwreck. Look at my snake bite. He said, imitate me. Hold on to the cross. Hold on to the spirit of God. Don't let go, no matter how bad it gets. Don't let go of God. He said, imitate me. I want to be an example. Hallelujah. How many of us in the church are that kind of example? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only thing that come out of our mouth is defeat, defeat, defeat. Fight, fight, fight. War, war, war. Hallelujah. It's time for you to hang up the gloves and let God do the fighting. He's already made it clear that this battle ain't mine, but it's of the Lord. I do what I can, and he does the rest. And the process of doing that, he said, now, Reuben, that you casted all your cares on me, he said, be still and know that I'm God. What? You mean to tell me it's that easy? 
You tell me, cast all my cares on you, for the battle is not mine, but it's yours. And now you're telling me to be still? Yeah. When he said be still, he was saying, Pastor Ruben, do me a big favor. While you're being still, won't you shut up? Because all your mouth does is shipwreck, destroy, and destruct. All people hear is about how the enemy is defeating you. Just be still. Let me fight for you. Hallelujah. Well, I'm bringing it to an end. God loves you. No offense in the message. I just love Paul. I get excited when I preach about Paul. Paul was a true man of God. Paul taught me how to hold on to the things of God in the time of suffering. Paul has really taught me how to let go of things that I may attain the things that God has for me. Paul has really shown me that the things that I have lost become fertilizer for the things that I have gained. Hallelujah. We love you. Just a quick reminder, this Sunday at 6 p.m. Riverside Peacemakers, hallelujah, at this parking lot service, we'll have the taquero out there, amen, at 6 o'clock, amen. We'll be giving out tacos, hallelujah. God is good, church. Come out and eat, break bread with us in the parking lot, amen. We're still going to practice social distancing. You'll get your tacos and go back to your vehicles or where you're sitting, but we will be having some food. Amen. Bring your picnic basket, anything you want to bring to be partakers. But we love you guys. Amen. Just a reminder for our prayer warriors from Riverside Peacemakers in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. We want you to pray. Help us pray for Sister Joanne Parra, Ray Parra, Liz Parra. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a whole lot of people that we're praying for. Amen. God is good. We love you. Good night. And see you when we see you.